When I was a kid, I would listen to a lot of like best of compilations from the 70s and it's like that was like, you know, best love songs yeah. of the 60s. Or... <laughs> like your dad has in the car. <laughs> Hi, I'm Helena and I'm joined by Dana from Porridge Radio for the latest in Enemies in Conversation series. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. So I think to start, let's dive right in with the new album. Um, a long name and a name I want to talk about. So can you tell us what it is and what it means? The album is called Water Slide Diving Board Ladder to the Sky. and. It means a lot of things. It was it kind of came from these different symbols that I was drawing over and over again and thinking about a lot and started out, I love water slides and I got really into drawing them. I had a lot of time at home, <laughs> a lot of time in my studio and just got really obsessed with drawing, you know, like boring British town um, water slides oh, yeah. and then going further and like looking for water slides that I like <laughs> during them. Um, I was at a friend's house and saw a collage by Eileen Agar, who was a surrealist artist. And um, it was a really beautiful collage that I just was really obsessed with. And it had a picture of a diving board in it. And that really struck me. <laughs> and so I kept drawing those. Um, the idea of a ladder to the sky then kind of, it, they all kind of followed, it was like, this was, this was like a year of just thinking about what the album was going to be and mm. what it was going to be called and how to visually represent it because I got really interested in drawing and trying to kind of represent the kind of things that I try to represent through song but through imagery. <laughs> and so those three ideas kind of came together. The ladder to the sky is kind of endlessness, um, and they, they just kind of worked together. And then I started trying to draw <laughs> compositions that included all three. And I also just realized that they, they represented, to me, what they represented felt very fitting with what the songs were about. Mm. And has art, in terms of like artwork and drawing, has that always been something you've taken inspiration from? Because I don't know if many people know that you drew the album covers for this album. Yeah. Um, I've always really loved drawing and painting. I did the album artwork for Every Bad as well and have also just done the artwork for other things, we've, everything else we've released. But I only really got into drawing and painting over the last few years. I had a lot of time mm. on my hands <laughs> and I've got an art studio and just spent a lot of time kind of... I wanted to learn how to really dedicate myself to drawing and painting where like music had become a kind of full-time thing mm. it's nice to have another space where you can play and make a mess and there's no real pressure for it to be anything so yeah, I just had a lot of fun with it you also mentioned the word endlessness um as one of the main themes on the album is is endlessness a good thing or a bad thing um I don't think it's either of them I think that I don't think I guess like one of the main things about this album that I was trying to do lyrically is is try and put these seemingly contradictory things together and allow them to not be contradictory. And I think that there's space for something to not be good or bad, but it can be both, but that doesn't mean that it's one or the other at any given moment. I think it's more of an idea and it's about a way of placing yourself or processing a feeling or an idea. Hmm. And what other kind of themes can people hear on the album? There's a lot of fear and anxiety, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of joy and love. And I think there's, I, I tried to kind of, I don't think I went in thinking, oh, this is gonna be about this thing. It's just kind of the songs emerge one after the other. And then you look back and you can kind of understand what they are about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In hindsight, you can't really understand what they are beforehand. Um, but I think maybe like what the, the album artwork represents to me, which is joy and fear and endlessness can also kind of be seen in the songs. I imagine that the lockdowns must have been a really weird time for you <laughs> and the whole band. Your album Every Bad came out in March 2020, so that's literally when at least the UK went into lockdown. Um, and then you get Mercury nominated and you have this breakthrough, but did you 
I imagine you guys didn't experience it in the same, in the normal way, quote unquote. Is there a normal way? <laughs> yeah, but I think we also hadn't ever experienced the normal way. Mm. So you kind of just go with stuff as it happens, you know, like I don't think the pandemic happened to us. I think it happened to everybody. I think everybody had a really tough few years. And yeah, I think a lot of people asked that kind of expecting me to be like, oh, it was the worst time mm. ever. But actually... It, it was what it was like obviously it was really difficult in loads of ways but there were also really amazing things about it like we got to rest and we got to demo and record a whole album <laughs> that we, like we wouldn't have been able to release this album now if it hadn't have been for the fact that we weren't touring so swings and roundabouts during the pandemic you guys you had to cancel so many gigs and festivals and tour and supporting people um now you've been back on stage, how did that feel, first of all? I think when we started playing festivals last summer, it was a bit surreal. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember playing at Green Man and suddenly being like, oh, all these people are here. <laughs> <laughs> they know our songs, what? <laughs> this is so bizarre, because I think we kind of saw it online, but I can't really connect the idea that people are listening to our music with the idea that those people exist until I see them exist. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I need, to, I need to see it to know that it's real. So it was quite, um, it was quite fun. But also, yeah, I think now we've been playing for a while. So it's, uh, you know, that was last summer and we've been on tour a few times since. Yeah. So I think we're kind of getting used to it now. Yeah. You said getting used to it, you know, in a way did the, time that you had in the pandemic where you all had to stay indoors do you think it helped you come to terms with kind of this breakthrough and and how successful you guys were becoming and how you know uh music outlets were naming you as the best band <laughs> you know? um not really like I think that that all kind of happened during mm. that time so it was even more surreal because I think that it would have been happening when we were touring and then I would have met people and then it was real but instead it was happening and we were all yeah just kind of being like what is this this yeah. is really bizarre but it's great I'm I'm glad people are listening yeah <laughs> that feels really good but um yeah I, I don't know well to bring it back to the new album I suppose um how does it feel making a follow-up to an album that was as good as Every Bad and, and that was nominated for a Mercury Prize? It was just really fun. I really mm. love writing and I really love the process of, of kind of writing a song, bringing it to the band, figuring it out together, recording it, mixing it. Like it was such an exciting process where we, were, we knew what we wanted to do and we were really excited to make this thing and then we actually got to make it. And that was great. And I don't think we... I don't think I ever, yeah, I don't think it really, I, it's not something that I worried about. It was like, how are we going to follow up this album? It was like, oh yeah, I'm excited to make the next thing. I know that I like it. Mm. <laughs> I know I'm proud of it. Yeah, I haven't yet had that feeling of, oh God, we've got to make something. People have to, are going to have to like it. Like that's not, yeah, it's not really on my mind. I think that's great. And tell me more about the recording process then, you know, bringing songs to the band, mixing it, everything you just said? I carry notebooks around mm. and I write a lot and think of, I'm, it's kind of always on my mind is just like what I want to write or mm. trying to find a moment. So I think I often, I'm often writing and thinking about songs and coming up with ideas. And so usually that will turn into a song outline and then I'll bring it to the band and we will discuss, <laughs> or, you know, people will have ideas for different things they want to add, um, and it just kind of goes from there. What was the song that was the, took the longest to write? I think The Rip was the one that really, it started a long time before we started demoing the album, and, like, I had this idea for, for how it would go, but mm. didn't quite know and never brought it to the band to kind of figure out something. And the lyrics changed a lot over the course of a few years because it was like a song that I 
started writing and then just kind of left it for a really long time and then listened to the demo I'd made and had a few ideas and then left it for a really long time and then brought it to the band and we arranged it and then we left it for a bit and then we realized that we needed to add another bit to it and so that it just like it really evolved over a long time where usually I'll kind of sit down write a load of lyrics and a song in one go and then and then that's us like that's done and then I'll and then we'll play it together and it will more or less have the same structure and like the same lyrical structure and melody and thing but mm. you guys um formed in Brighton yeah um how much has Brighton influenced you as a band do you think I think a lot. I think the last record, Every Bad, was very influenced lyrically by the sea. And that's very Brighton, Brighton-y of it, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I guess wherever you are is always going to influence everything you do. Everyone you meet, everything you see, anything that you're... Everyone you're interacting with is always going to influence the things that you make. Because, I know, I feel like... A lot of the time I'm just kind of absorbing everything around me and then somehow just like spewing it back out (laughs) in in a way. On this album as well, were there any particular musical artists or bands that you drew inspiration from or were even just listening to at the time that you were making the album? There were actually so many that um, we ended up making a list of every band that we mentioned in the (laughs) studio and it's on the... um, album on the liner notes we put every band that came up whilst oh we were just like recording. How many are we talking? Um, I didn't count. I feel like there's probably only like 20 or mm. some 20 or 30 or something. Um, and is there a wide range? Yeah, I think it kind of spans a lot of, a lot of genres and ideas. I mean, one that I keep mentioning is um, Deftones. <laughs> so now everyone's going to be like, this is a Deftones record. <laughs> but um, yeah. Deftones and like Charlie XCX and but then there were a lot of indie bands as well and mm. different there's yeah it was a lot and growing up did you listen to a wide genre or was it a lot of indie rock when I was a teenager I was really into indie music mm. I was really just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> indie indie kid but um when I was a kid I would listen to a lot of like best of compilations from the 70s and it's like that was like you know best love songs yeah. of the 60s or <laughs> like your dad has in the car <laughs> kind of, I yeah. love those to be fair or like a lot of dad rock like Deep Purple and yeah. Guns N' Roses and Led Zeppelin or um when I was younger I was really into um the Carpenters and the Cranberries they were like so there's like a lot of different yeah things. I guess it all inhabits a similar world if we're talking about the album being very epic and like you're releasing something we have to talk about the first single that you dropped from it which is back to the radio which is so good i honestly when i first listened to it just continue to listen to it over (laughs) and over again um i would i would love to know the process of of starting that song the process of starting the song (laughs) (laughs) it's so like um like when you think about it like that, you have to put things into a timeline. Yeah. And I think whenever you're making something, it's really hard to 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 put it into a timeline. It feels like it kind of strips it of the magic somehow. Like it makes mm. it more two dimensional. I remember it. Um, I remember just I, I just kind of like was a song that I picked up the guitar and started. It just kind of came out like sometimes you just start over a song and you're like, oh, that's the song. Mm. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of it as well, it also has this um, intro, which is before you start singing, which is over a minute. Um, yes. Why? <laughs> um, we wanted to give it an intro that kind of felt too long and felt uncomfortable <laughs> and felt a bit kind of like, why is this happening? This is going on for too long. And we, in that intro, we've got, I mean, I think Sam plays those of feedback guitars on it. I recorded the bins being collected from outside my bedroom window and that's that's in there. Um, our friend Maria, who plays violin across the album, she's kind of screeching her violin <laughs> across the intro. We wanted to make something that just kind of builds up this tension, but in a really ugly way, in a way where you're like, this is really like, 
okay, guys, can you stop now and just play the song? <laughs> and it was kind of like, how long can we go on for? How long can we make this where it's, it's just a bit too long? Mm. That was kind of what we were going for, that kind of like discomfort. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's actually good because then we all have to sit in that uncomfortableness. But yeah, also, for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually isn't that long. No, but it's... I feel like we could have done that for way longer. I think in practices we were like, okay, <laughs> let's keep going. Let's never end, intro. yeah. Really, um, though. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's... I think it's, yeah, I think it's very special and I think it's a killer way to open the album. Um, I would also love to know about the music video for it. Um, it's just so cool. Like, it's who amazing. made that? My sister directed it and she came up with the concept for it and also made a lot of the bits for it. She's really, um, she's, I'm really close with my sister and she was a really big part of just everything I was making. Like whenever I had done a painting, I would send it to her and she'd be like, mm, okay, it doesn't look quite finished to me actually. <laughs> like, or I'd send her a mix and she'd be like, this is, she was listening to all the mixes as we were doing them and she was, she's incredibly creative and has a lot of ideas and she, when she was listening to the mixes, she was like, I've had this idea for a music video um, and described that video. And originally it was actually gonna be for a different song, mm. but um, she changed it to fit with Back to the Radio and just did an incredible job at directing. <laughs> what other music videos have you enjoyed making from this album? So we made another video for The Rip, which mm. was also done by Ella, my sister. Mm. And um, that one, was actually really physically exhausting because it's like I'm running on a treadmill. It's really late at night. It was January, so it was freezing. Oh, wow. um, I had to run on a treadmill and perform this <laughs> song for a while. The band were all dressed in these like um, spooky <laughs> white linen <laughs> <laughs> clothes, wearing like these masks, and we all had to be around for ages. And at the end of it, I had to jump off this big terrifying it was only about six meters but I think it gave me a fear of heights just jumping <laughs> on this thing over and over again and every time my Ella would be like she'd be like we rented this thing you you gotta you gotta do it or we just like wasted so much money on this video and I was so scared and it was like one in the morning I was so cold and every time I'd like land and I'd land really badly because I was so scared that my body was really stiff and I'd be like I can't do it she'd be like get up and she's like one more you can do one more and I'd be like I can't do it and then the next day I couldn't move from the pain oh my God. but it was fun and it looked good even and you know and I gave myself a fear of heights which is cool <laughs> so, do you think maybe your sister is trying to uh, <laughs> to kill me uh, yes, yes. <laughs> no. to have a seat she's got a secret vendetta against you <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of those two videos because I just think she did an incredible job and yeah it was really fun I, this is like the first time that she's really been able to make videos like this like she's always made videos and other artwork mm. and is I just think she's an incredible artist, but it was just like seeing her make these videos was really, I feel really proud of them and I feel really proud of her. Yeah, they're really unique. And I think, um, I think it's really special to be able to work with a sibling like that because so many people don't have that closeness. Um, we always really, really close. Yeah, I think we always have been, you know, with like the exception of a few teenage years. Yeah. <laughs> I was horrible. Um, <laughs> But yeah, are you the older one? I'm the middle child. Oh, middle, so, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I am older than her. <laughs> so yeah, I think that makes a difference. But she's always been really supportive and really involved with the art and music I've mm. been making, and it's you know I think likewise I am really proud of her and everything that she does, and it's it's really fun to be able to. She she I think siblings kind of have a language just from having grown up in the same household yeah. we have the same points of reference for a lot of things and I think that allows us to communicate in a really natural and instinctive way and she can understand exactly what I'm trying to achieve just through knowing me really really well which is really great so I can I can make things and she'll be like she'll notice all these really subtle things that maybe someone who doesn't know me as well wouldn't mm. notice and she can give feedback in a really honest way where her criticisms are actually really helpful and her support is incredibly uplifting mm. which is really nice it's very cool um we've talked you know about these kind of um epic songs so i think both back to the radio and the rip are so 
epic with really strong guitars but um you know I don't want everyone to think that the album is only that because there are these real moments of tenderness and quiet as well like with flowers um tell me about flowers first flowers started off as I guess I, I wanted to write something that was really soft and gentle and I wanted to write something on keyboard just as a way to kind of challenge myself to write in new and different ways um, and I kind of came up with a much shorter version of it that was yeah just keyboard and me singing and maybe a little bit of guitar and I sent it to Sam who then kind of came back with a much kind of like they just kind of made the arrangement bigger and <laughs> more elaborate it was a really fun collaborative process actually because it then Sam kind of wrote this really beautiful keyboard, um, like piano part, and then Georgie plays it on the album, and she played it on piano, which was really lovely to just... I don't think we've had any piano on anything <laughs> before, so it was, it was a really nice collaborative process of the mm. song. Did you... You said you challenged yourself there. Did you think you challenged yourself a lot while making this album? Yeah, Definitely. I think a lot of it was thinking like, oh, what have we done before and Mm. how can I be more patient with the process? How can I try and write something in a different way? How can I, like, oh, maybe I don't have to bash chords on a guitar. Mm. Maybe I can write a lead part that is maybe more gentle or more interesting or harder to play. That will challenge me to just be better. Do you think it's sometimes harder to be gentle and soft and tender than it is to be loud and extroverted yeah definitely I think um especially when I started writing songs and performing them I felt like I had to shout to be heard and I had to be loud so that people would shut up and listen and because of that that was just like became the thing that I did and then I think with this album I was really, I really wanted to write some songs that had space for me to just sing quietly. And there's the last song on the album, which is called Water Slide Diving Board, Ladder to the Sky, is just, um, it's really stripped back and it's just acoustic guitar and me and Georgie singing and a little bit of keys and synth. It's like very quiet and I've never really allowed myself to be that quiet and gentle before. And it was really, it was really fun actually just just allowing it to be. And when we've played that live, people people listen. And it's a nice feeling like, oh, we don't have to scream for people to listen. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you can say something quietly and that's mm. enough. Do you think um, people's reactions will be the same as with every bad? Do you think people will find comfort in this album in the same way? I hope so. Or maybe they'll find comfort in a different way. Maybe they won't like it. I think it's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's chill. I know it's good. <laughs> now you're playing uh, more festivals, more gigs. Um, what some things you've got coming up? We are releasing the album on May 20th. We will be on an in-store tour that week. We will be playing loads of festivals all summer. Mm-hmm. Big UK tour this winter in the UK and Europe, more um, stuff coming. Mm, where, um, what can people expect from the, from the tour? Um, they can expect big tunes. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. And a, a rock show. A rock show. The rock show. The rock show. The show. <laughs> Well, Dana from Porridge Radio, thank you so much for joining us here on Enemy. Hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much.